it's me, Frizzy, and I just got to spend a week in Japan nerding out over Detective Pikachu and Godzilla King of Monsters. <laughs> That's a sentence I never thought I'd say. That's right, Warner Brothers, my love, Warner Brothers, flew me all the way out to Tokyo, Japan for a week of Detective Pikachu, Godzilla, and just, just Tokyo experiences. In this video, I'll focus on the Detective Pikachu side, and at a later date, we'll, we'll talk about the Godzilla stuff. I first saw Detective Pikachu more than a month ago when Warner Brothers invited me to a little special screening of it. So I was already pumped to be more involved in talking about the movie because I knew it was one that I was excited for every Everyone to see. So let me give you a little rundown of the things we did. First, Megan and I could not resist going on a little visit to the Pokemon Center, which was obviously the most incredible Pokemon store I've ever seen, selling plushies of Pikachu in a dozen outfits, and especially a special springtime Pikachu with a pink afro of flowers that they seem really excited about right now. <laughs> Loads of Pikachu and Eevee hype all over. I'm really glad that Eevee and the Eeveelutions are finally getting the recognition that they deserve. The Eeveelutions will always be some of my favorite Pokemon. So obviously I grabbed some Vaporeon socks. There was loads of cutesy pastel Easter merch for springtime, some Edvard Munch's The Scream style phone covers. I thought the Psyduck one made the most sense. Plushies big and small of practically all 800 something Pokemon, but not, not actually all of them. <laughs> Everything I could have needed for my flight back to America, even more socks. Pokemon specific perfume for, you know, when you just want to smell specifically like Mew, because don't we all? An adorable little strangely translated Pokemon blanket. I just, I, I, for some reason, I thought that phrasing was really funny and cute and endearing. A great little Detective Pikachu display. Eh? Eh? And some Pokemon face masks. So obviously I couldn't resist. By some miracle, Megan and I were able to squeeze in a reservation at the Pokemon Cafe. When you sit down in the cafe, you get a random placemat of one of the first gen Pokemon. Mine was Nidoran female, which I was pretty happy with, and Megan got Golem. There was a little tablet on the table to order from a huge assortment of Pokemon themed food and drinks, which was unfortunately pretty much all in Japanese. <laughs> Luckily, we guessed pretty well. You could pick latte art of any of the first gen Pokemon, and it was a tough decision for me between Articuno and Haunter, but ultimately, I went with my favorite ice birdie. Team Mystic, baby. Megan was able to order a lot more food than I was since I've gone pescatarian. She got some sort of cheesy Snorlax burger dish with tomato soup, and an Eevee rice patty with spaghetti, and an Eevee latte. Eevee is her baby. And I got a Bulbasaur veggie burger. Aww. Yeah, and it was, ugh, so good, so good. Melt in your mouth. I also got a stunning Articuno boba float. Maybe it was blueberry, blue raspberry, I don't know, something like that. Megan got a grape Gengar smoothie and a Moltres strawberry boba float. Megan's dessert was a delicious cherry marshmallow Afro Pikachu cake. Amazing. And a Jigglypuff cheesecake, yes. And I was very, very happy with my choice of boba cream raspberry chocolate brownie ice cream Eevee cookie parfait. Are you kidding me? And you'll never believe who showed up next. Pikachu himself. The chef arrived and we were able to thank him for our meal. It was a very exciting moment. Warner Brothers took us on a lovely tour of Akihabara, the nerdy shopping hub of Tokyo, full with an abundance of computer parts, anime, manga, and video games. And turns out, while we were there, a wild Pokemon did appear. A wild Jesse appeared! I was literally gonna say that. <laughs> oh, oh, damn, I thought I was so smart. My darling, Jesse just happened to be in Tokyo at the same time, and Warner Brothers was kind enough to let her join along for the day. I may be an anime noob when it comes to anything that's not Pokemon, but I love me some Pokemon, man. And Akihabara did not disappoint on Pokemon merch. They even had loads of collectibles that I didn't see in the Pokemon Center. Oh, and the best piggy bank. I had my first taste of Taiyaki, which is my new obsession. Taiyaki is kind of like usually a red bean paste or custard in like fish-shaped pancakes or waffle batter. And they're delicious. They're probably one of my favorite things. But these ones are shaped like Magikarp. Uh, ah! I need it. Magikarp Taiyaki. taiyaki. <laughs> Still with chocolates. Taiyaki. Okay, All right. 
I want to get the magic carpet on the back. Oh my god. Oh, I got a good thumbnail. <laughs> this is so good. Wow, wow, wow. You have to have a bite. It's like better than Nutella. Oh my god. I'm so happy. Okay, you have to try it now. Truly, if you know of a place in Los Angeles where I can get taiyaki, I know nothing. Please let me know. It's probably somewhere in Little Tokyo, but I, I need specifics. Help me. Tweet me. Let me know. We took a little stroll through the insanity that is the street market of Ueno Ameyoko. Then we visited Sensoji, an ancient Buddhist temple in Asakusa, originally built in 645, making it Tokyo's oldest temple. Which, when you live in a country that's barely existed for 300 years, it's pretty mind-blowing. Much of the temple was bombed and destroyed in World War II and then rebuilt, but we were shown a section that has stood since the very beginning. Then Warner Brothers brought us to Shibuya Cross to take in the sights and meet the stars of Detective Pikachu, Justice Smith and Catherine Newton. Now, I had this whole plan to just ask them a couple of simple, lighthearted questions, but when Sarah Beth put me up there, she mentioned that I do Pokemon impressions, and Justice immediately requested his favorite Pokemon, which is Totodile. Uh, that was totally me. <laughs> oh! <laughs> So then it just kind of turned into a fun little game of they name a Pokemon and I try to do the voice. Can you do Psyduck? Psyduck! Oh my god! Yes! These are all so good. That's amazing! <laughs> How do you remember like what they sound like? I don't all of them. First 150, yes. Yeah. After that, what was it? Oh, just the last 150. This is so good. Ah, oh, wait. That's I tried this game um, now. Um, Dragonite. Yeah. <laughs> How do you remember? Oh. Justice seemed amazed that I could even remember the sounds of each of the Pokemon, but really I just got pretty lucky that they were only mentioning first gen Pokemon and some of my favorites from second gen. <laughs> Anywho, they were super sweet. Justice, Catherine, I know promoting your movie is part of your job, but just thank you for being so cool about it and really sweet. That night, it was time for a dinner cruise, baby! On our walk to the boat, Warner Brothers was warning us like, hey, you might want to have your camera ready for when we get to the boat. And I was thinking like, oh, okay, this, this must be a cool looking boat. But, um... Wow, it's Pikachu. Yeah, yeah, no, that was Ryan Reynolds. Cool, 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 cool. I'm cool, I'm cool, it was cool. I'm cool, we're cool. I mean, they didn't go on the cruise with us. They just hung out for a minute for a quick photo. But the dinner cruise had a stellar buffet, beautiful cake along with little different emotion detective Pikachus and one giant Pikachu and some great and greatly bad karaoke as it should be. The next day, Warner Brothers let me go to my second viewing of Detective Pikachu. I had already seen it, so I wasn't required to go, but I just wanted to because I am pumped about this movie and I was pumped for Jesse to see it. So we went together and I think I liked it better the second time. No spoilers, of course, but there is so much about the first half of the movie that is a lot easier to appreciate on a second viewing. So I, I definitely recommend a repeat viewing for this one. Later that day, we visited Hapo and Garden, a gorgeous super zen Edo period Japanese garden complete with giant koi pond, adorable paths, and an assortment of ancient bonsai trees. This one is 525 years old. This tiny tree Insane. After an amazing sushi lunch, no, we didn't get to eat the Pokemon sushi, we were taught how to write Pikachu and our names in kanji with an ink brush. I'm of course awful at it because my handwriting is terrible with my shaky hands, but I was a bit better at the origami Pikachu afterwards. Super cute. Then they taught us how to roll sushi, which I wish I could do all day so I could just keep eating it. Please. It's all I want is sushi every day. It's fully worth the potential mercury poisoning for me. The final Detective Pikachu event was the world premiere. We were able to walk the zigzaggy black and yellow electric Pikachu tail of a carpet. And I was lucky enough to find this trench coat looking dress while we were shopping in Harajuku. More about Harajuku in the next video. So I just paired it with this detective hat that Warner Brothers gifted me and a magnifying glass that is still in my luggage somewhere. And I was set. I love a theme, even if we're not given one. So that was half-ish of my Tokyo experience. Thanks again to Warner Brothers for bringing me on this trip and for putting so much hard work and care into it. It really does not go unappreciated. You all are a blast to work with. And as for all of you watching, please 
tweet me once you've seen Detective Pikachu because I know I'm not going to be the only one who was mind blown by it. I put that in quotes because it is part of a review of a tweet I put out that's been quoted by official Detective Pikachu posts all over the internet, including Ryan Reynolds' Instagram story. <laughs> it just makes me so happy. Anywho, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Stay tuned for my next Tokyo video focused on Godzilla, King of Monsters, probably in a couple weeks or so. And I'll see you next week with a brand new video.